Hi, my name is Leslie Hayden. I'm a geologist at the U.S. Geological Survey. I'm the manager for the Electron Microbeam Labs. This is our SEM. It's a scanning electron microscope. It's similar to an optical microscope in that we use it to look at images at high magnification. But unlike an optical scope, which uses light to view uh, images, we use a beam of electrons, and this lets us look at much higher magnifications. Some SEMs um, can get up to a million X magnification. This one will go into the 100,000-ish Range. So we can image things that are maybe tens of nanometers in size. All the different groups at the USGS use our SEM. We image everything from soils, sands, fossils and microfossils, organic material, microbes, uh, material produced during and around fault zones, and material produced during volcanic eruptions kind of glass and minerals and um, the little vesicles that contained uh, volcanic gases during the explosion. So pretty much anything having to do with geology can go in our SEM. So when we work with the SEM, a lot of times we want to know uh, one of two things. It's either the chemistry, like what is this mineral, or we want to know the structure, size, particles, stuff like that. But sometimes we just want to know the spatial distribution of the chemistry. So um, this part is richer in iron than in that part. And in that situation, we can do element mapping. So we basically choose an area of the sample and we run the beam across it, and it picks up all of the elements that it finds on its uh, raster of that image, and it produces a map of each element that it finds, so you can see areas of high concentration, areas of low concentration. You just want to kind of see it. It helps to see the distribution. So another technique that we use in the SEM is cathodoluminescence, or CL. CL is a phenomenon that occurs when electrons, so our electron beam, interacts with a luminescent material, and this causes the emission of photons. Some of these photons have a wavelength that exists on the visible spectrum, so we're able to image it with the detector. An outdated but commonplace example of cathodoluminescence are the cathode ray tube televisions that were like the first early generations of television that uses this technology. In geology and mineralogy and material science, we use it to image um, the internal structures of materials and we can get information about composition, growth history, structural integrity or defects that we wouldn't normally see using just the standard uh, compositional or topography imaging techniques. So that's the SEM here at Menlo Park. It's a fairly common, simple, yet very powerful tool that's used extensively by all the different research groups here on campus. <laughs>